Hey guys, what's going on, Pride London? Hey, you guys know what to do. As always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's move into today's video. So we'll start off with some news about someone leaving the club. This is an exclusive by Football Insider. They claim that club ready to bid for Chelsea 26 year old as Lampard, green lights 18 million pound transfer. And this 26 year old being mentioned is Emerson Palmieri. And we saw him play against uh, Bayern, didn't have the greatest game defensively of course. Um, there was a few errors that you could definitely pinpoint to being his fault a little bit, but in general the defence wasn't up to scratch. But Inter Milan are ready to make a move for the Chelsea defender Football Insider can exclusively reveal. Conte is keen to sign the 25 year old who has struggled to establish himself in England. A source at Stamford Bridge has told Football Insider that Frank Lampard has given the green light for the left back to be sold this summer. And I think that aligns with a lot of what I've been saying. Um, I personally think that we should sell Emerson, keep Alonso if we're going to keep one of the two, um, simply because. Emerson is the more traditional left back and that is going to, you know that's the role that we want to fill in whereas Alonso can actually be very valuable to us if we have to switch to a five at the back system you know we've done that against some of the more difficult teams this season and if we choose to do that Marcus Alonso is a great asset because there's cover behind him with a three man center back role um, and that leaves him in the wing back sort of area he can bomb forward he can put great crosses in he's got a good shot on him we saw him score against Spurs uh, this season you know he's got a great shot on him at times and can be a real asset going forward so to me it makes sense we keep him for the scenario that we play a you know five at the back sort of system and Emerson can go because he's the more traditional left back that's going to need replacing and hasn't really been up to scratch since he joined us uh, so it says Lampard recognises that you must sell to raise funds for defensive signings and sees Emerson as surplus to requirements in London and they understand that the Italian Giants are plotting a formal bid uh, for Emerson who's currently valued at about 15 to 18 million pounds so that's not necessarily how much they're going to bid that is just his value so whether we see that sort of you know money being offered it's possible I don't think 15 to 18 million isn't that unrealistic especially given the Inter are do, um, going quite far in the Europa League so if they go on and win it or something then they'll have a bit extra money but either way they're getting more money the further they go so 15 to 18 million not too bad and I think you know it's a good move for us because I don't think we really need Emerson we want something better and it's a good start for Emerson to be able to go to a new club a new country start fresh and try and prove himself out there because he has he's had some very good moments at Chelsea where he's been in a decent bit of form but it's the consistency that he can't sort of keep so it'll be a fresh start for him and Inter Milan you know as we've seen at glimpses Emerson has been a good player so 15 to 18 million would be a good move for them and it's just an extra bit of money that can line our pockets for Kai Havertz deals and things like that And speaking of Kai Havertz deals, Kai Havertz transfer talks heating up as Chelsea negotiate Leverkusen down to £71.9 million fee. And this has been reported and apparently the talks are sort of hotting up now that, you know, they, they dropped out of the Europa League, they lost 2-1 to Inter Milan in the quarterfinals. Um, and this transfer expert has basically said, that, you know, transfer talks are hotting up. He's set to make a five-year uh, contract with us, which we've known that already. We've agreed everything with Kai. It's just about getting the club um, on board with us. And it says Leverkusen initially demanded 90 million for Havertz, while Chelsea valued the striker closer to 70 million. And the latest reports suggest that Blues will pr uh, prove closer with their estimation. Shreer claims a deal worth about £71.9 million pounds, um, is said to be agreed, which would represent another excellent piece of business for Chelsea's uh, hierarchy. And £71.9 million pounds is actually a very good price, I'd think, for Kai Havertz. I could see a case for Kai Havertz being signed for 80 to £90 million, realistically. I think he's that good of a player but if we can get this deal done for you know about 71.9 million which is just about the same as what we paid for Kepa hopefully this one isn't as big of a flop as Kepa seems to be um, but that'd be a very good piece of business in, in my opinion 71.9 million it's good they um they wanted around 90 million initially so it looks like with them having dropped out of the Champions League, out of the Europa League, probably earlier than they would have liked. Um, they haven't really got much case of keeping Havertz because they know that if they keep him for another year, then he's going to go somewhere and he's going to go a lot cheaper because he'll be into the last year of his contract. So they can either keep him for a season or two and hope that he can sort of help push them into Champions League and winning a cup or something like that, which will give them the equivalent of what they would have you know, got if they have a couple of good seasons left with him. 
but realistically I think the wise move for them is to just take the money we know he wants to leave as well and having a player that wants to leave isn't really a good thing at your club so 71.9 million I think will be fair for us fair for them Kai Havertz gets a great contract and a five-year deal to stay at Chelsea so I'd be happy with this one going through. Hopefully this report is, it looks pretty decent, so it looks solid. 71.9 million pounds for talent like Kai Havertz sounds pretty good if you ask me. So I'm fine with that one going through. Fingers crossed we see some stuff coming in the next few days. And the next piece of news we have, Chelsea make approach for transfer target who has 630 million pound release clause. And if that isn't a ridiculous amount of money, I don't know what is. But this player, if you can guess, I doubt you could, um, is Real Madrid star Vinicius Jr. And we had an approach rejected by Zidane in November. Um, the 20-year-old has struggled for regular minutes at the Bernabeu and has grown frustrated at his lack of opportunities. Surprise, surprise, Real Madrid um, snap someone up and then decide, actually, you know what? We're not actually that bothered about playing you. Um, it's a surprise, surprise, you know? It's not a thing that um, Real Madrid do at all. Um, but it says that Lampard is also keen on signing Vinicius Jr. Um, the Brazilian joined Real Madrid from Flamengo, Flamengo in 2018 as in, has five years remaining on his current contract, so it's going to be very expensive. Obviously, we're not going to be paying the £630 million release clause. If we take a look at his transfer value, he is actually only valued at about £40.5 million. So... That 650 million is obviously just a case of we'll just throw an insane number on this so that no club is realistically ever going to meet it. Um, but he has had a troubled time. As you can see here, his position is left wing. You can check here, he has played a sort of um, second striker cam sort of role as well and can play on the right, but realistically he's more on the left side, which would be a little bit of a weird sign for me if we were to play him on the left because we've got Pulisic there. Um, Callum can play left or right, I suppose. Hakeem Ziyech more so on the right. So... Would he be a backup to Pulisic? I don't know. Like, I feel like we'd be getting too many starting players if that's the case. Um, he is only 20 years old, so I guess there's still time to mould him into something maybe a bit more preferable to our team. Maybe if we wanted him for, you know, our main right-sided winger, then possibly we'd go with that. But a five-year contract left at Real Madrid is going to prove difficult um, to sort of pick him out. Unless Real Madrid really are keen on getting rid of him because they've realised we signed him, we haven't actually got much room in this squad to play him, so he's just going to have to go, and maybe they'll be willing to sell, that's possible. Um, he's quite short, but you know, for a winger, that's not a deal breaker by any means. If we take a look at his stats this season, in the La Liga he got 12 starts with 17 uh, sub appearances, average about 6.66 average rating, so a bit better than average but nothing insane, managed to get 3 goals and 1 assist, so those numbers are definitely too low, um, considering you know 12 starts is a decent amount, I'd expect him to get a bit more than that, uh, 4 yellow cards as well is quite a lot for a winger. Um, shots per game only 1.3 pass success rate, 80.7 pass success rate, 2 man of the matches and doesn't win very many aerials in this team. In the Champions League he did make 2 appearances, 3 as a substitute and managed to get a goal and an assist which is better ratio, um, better passing success rate in the Champions League as well with a better average rating of 6.72. So overall in the Champions League against the bigger teams he's actually managed to do better strangely enough. And then here you can see the different positions that he has played. Um, he has played obviously 20 appearances as a sub and has struggled to get a higher rate in there, but that's understandable because you don't have as much time on the pitch. Um, as a left winger, he has um, made seven appearances, just got the one assist, but this average rating is quite high. Um, further back as a sort of left midfielder, five appearances with two goals, one assist, so he's done much better when sitting back a bit further, which is a bit interesting, and a better average rating again. And then sort of in between the two as an attacking midfielder on the left side, two appearances, two goals with a 7.88 average rating. So... It's really the sub appearances that have brought his rating down. When he started in these games, he's actually performed really well. Not enough goal contributions for me um, being that far up the pitch, but even when he's a little further back, he manages um, some good contributions. His characteristics are he's very good at dribbling. If you've watched this guy play, he's very good at dribbling. Um, not so good on the defensive contribution side, which is possibly we you know we see a lot of that with Lampard's current team. Whether that's something he plans you know to utilize going forward is having the wingers drop back. We don't know, because with a more solid defence, maybe it wouldn't be required as much. But either way, um, not as good in the defensive phase. Style of play is he likes to cut inside, likes to dribble, he's an indirect set-piece threat, and he likes to play short passes. Then here you can see from the bottom up, uh, his most recent games, 
and you know he had a good game here bad and then pretty much average for a while in this game he got a goal um and the man of the match rating and this the, you know man of the match rating the game before so maybe a bit of a confidence player and that when he starts hitting good for me he sort of sticks with it we don't know um but yeah, this guy, you know, coming off the bench, given good minutes here, man of the match, given good minutes here, man of the match, and then all these sub appearances really drag his rating down and make him look a bit bad, but realistically he hasn't had that much time on the pitch for most of these, most of these are like 20 minute appearances, this one a bit longer, but you know he's not getting that much time when he is he seems to be performing quite well all of these games where he had like 80 to 90 minutes are all above seven ratings one of them even an 8.4 so it does show that Vinicius Junior given the starting opportunities at Real Madrid has performed well um, and realistically could be a good option for us um, it does question, make me question if we were to sign him what happens for Callum that pretty much brings Callum out of this like peck in order of course we've got Nakim Ziyech that will be playing on the right most likely for us so then what's going to happen there Pulisic's on the left I don't want him to replace Pulisic down the middle as a second striker not really because we're going to have like Kai Havertz and Mason Mount in that sort of role so it's interesting where does this guy fit into our team and Chelsea have apparently made an approach for him um so We'll see how this one plays out. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes because I, I'm hoping that this one is just a story that maybe, you know, it's someone Chelsea are considering but probably aren't going to sign because I don't see him accepting being a squad player. Um, but who knows? We'll see what happens with this one. I'll keep you guys up to date, of course. That is going to be the end of the video. So if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. See ya.